a religious mystery worthy of the Da Vinci Code. Is it possible that Christianity evolved from an ancient Egyptian cult? In fact, is it also possible that the historical Jesus didn't even exist? The tale of a controversial theory and a fascinating journey into antiquity based on the best-selling book by an Anglican priest. The Pagan Christ. I'm Anne-Marie MacDonald. This is Doc Zone. Roughly one-third of the planet shares the same belief, that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was born on Christmas Day, died on a cross, and was resurrected by the power of God. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. The story of Jesus Christ gives meaning to most Christians. It is the very glue that binds their faith and guides their actions. I warn to you, he is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. But one man, who has devoted his entire life to Christianity, has concluded that there is absolutely no evidence an historical Jesus ever lived. Christianity made a rather fateful error in the early centuries of its life in which it took the message which it had and literalized it. Where and how the whole thing actually crystallized and took shape into what we now know as Christianity is still veiled in, in a mist. A dark mystery locked away for millennia in the strange code of an ancient stone. Its secrets contain the discovery of a new story of Jesus, one written 3,000 years before his birth. Ordinary people suspect that there's a lot more there to, to be told that they haven't been told. And the truth is that there was cover-up. A cover-up Tom Harper believes was designed to protect the Christian church and to mask the true identity of Jesus. In the town of Bethlehem, a narrow passage burrows deep into a wall of stone. It leads to one of the most sacred places on earth. Christians have come here, as they have for centuries, to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. The story started when Jesus was born here in, in, in an inn, grotto, stable, inside inn. The first Christians observed this place by building inside it a place for prayer. Now we're going to visit the growth of the nativity where Jesus was born. It's a story now 2,000 years old. A story that begins with a virgin birth in this cave on December 25th. A divine birth heralded by a star in the sky. According to Christian tradition, this is the exact location where the Son of God was born. And for Christians the world over, it's also the place where their faith begins. 
But it's also the center of an ongoing controversy, a flashpoint for those who question the very earthly existence of Jesus. It may have a history, but is it historical? I never asked that question before. Tom Harper has been an ordained Anglican priest for more than 40 years. He's also a professor of New Testament and Greek studies, a Rhodes Scholar, and a best-selling author. All his life, he's believed explicitly in the Christ of the Gospels. Yes, I didn't question the miracles very much. I mean, the thought that there never was a historical Jesus never even rose to the surface of my, of my mind. You just simply assumed it dropped from the heavens, as it were. And there it was. But now, Tom Harper often finds himself at odds with other Christians in his approach to the faith. It's amazing, but at the heart of every religion, the same truth seems to be hitting me. That the spark of the divine is in every one of us before we meet Jesus or before we meet the Buddha or anyone else. It is implanted in the human consciousness and is the means whereby we ultimately know God and come to be like God. But for most Christians, the connection to God is made directly through the historical figure of Jesus Christ. What happened here in Jerusalem that only happened once and happened nowhere else on the face of the earth? Yes, exactly. Jesus was crucified, buried and resurrected here. So that's the important thing. However, at the Holy Land Experience, a Christian theme park, preachers use theater to teach those seeking more insight into the life of Jesus. They are the instruments that call So it's just me and you. Crucify him. Get up. One of those bringing the story of Jesus to life is Christian actor Les Shevoldayoff. The king of the Jews, huh? Well, Oh, yeah, get up! Get up! Find your people wall. are hurting. And I think a lot of people come here saying, maybe, just maybe, I can catch a glimpse that God loves me. Because they've heard it. We've all heard it. But have you experienced it? And so we can bring that here. We can provide the environment where we can freely say the word of God. Get up! Get up! What's the matter with you? The mighty king of the Jews, and you can't even watch. Every story brought to life at the Holy Land Experience comes word for word from the pages of the four Gospels that form the New Testament. The central character is Jesus Christ, whose life on earth is cut short by a brutal crucifixion. Christ figure is the part, the Messiah, who came to die on the cross, rose from the dead, and provide a way to heaven that you don't have to do anything other than accept. And people don't get it. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus Christ has actually become an idol in, 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 in the Christian religion. He is the focus of everything. We don't talk about God much, it's all about Jesus. And uh, surprisingly, because if you read the Gospels, he didn't talk that much about him, him himself. He pointed people to, to God. In his search for a better understanding of his faith and the life of Jesus Christ, Tom Harper closely studied the four stories of the Gospels, but he found little evidence to support the existence of a man said to have walked the earth some 2,000 years ago. There was so little, that is to say none, uh, in the sense of biographical information in these so-called biographies. They're contradictory. Uh, the, the nativity story in Matthew contradicts the sto nativity story in Luke, but the contradictions are everywhere. Tom Harper is not alone. Timothy Frake and Peter Gandy, authors of six books on Christianity, also challenge the idea of an historical Jesus. The Gospels are faith documents. They're not history documents. I think in academic circles, this has been established for a very, very long time. They're faith documents. So put them on one side. You can't use them to, to, to ground the history of Jesus. There are no divine interventions in history. There is a common sense approach to things. And the traditional history is just inadequate, I'm afraid.
On the shores of the Sea of Galilee, Christian tourists gather at the place reputed to be the house where Jesus Christ preached to his first four disciples. Tour guide David Ridrin makes his living recounting the story of the historical Jesus Christ. It was here along the shores of this lake 